This story takes place a long time ago, in another world, where talented warriors, trained in martial arts by the gods they worshipped, protected the people from criminals and demons. These warriors were called Samurai. This tale finds its roots in the village of Aki, where, according to legend, samurai were blessed by the raven god Tengu. It is said that the samurai were able to defeat their opponents with a single blow. Their leader, Susano, was an unrivaled fighter, master of the arts of winds and storms. She was so fierce and brutal on the battlefield that she could be mistaken for a man, a beast, or even a monster. A bitter rivalry between the two commanders of the Aki and Natsu clans escalated into a violent war that plagued their villagers for many years and showed no signs of stopping any time soon. At the heart of this unending chaos starts the tale of the samurai, Jinmu, an orphan raised by Susano. One day, in the village of the Raven, our hero was finishing his training. As he'd done since a young age, Jinmu warmed up in the dojo, following the training required by the village chief. He was the most promising disciple. He put in quite the effort, firmly hoping to one day play his part in the protection of his people. He knew this for sure. The Natsu Kamiya, Amaterasu, was no man to call a truce. Jinmu knew the origin of the Natsu clan like the back of his hand. Like everyone else, he was aware that Susano's eternal rival had betrayed her twice, turning against his own allies and mercilessly slaughtering his comrades to satisfy his selfish desires. It was because of Amaterasu that Jinmo had lost both his father and his mother, whom he had never known, and so Susano had to raise him in their stead. Yet, it was not out of vengeance that Jinmu wished to fight, yeah. but to protect his own. It was from this unwavering determination that he drew his strength. Jinmu's training was coming to an end, culminating in a final challenge against his friend. Finally catching up, eh, little raven?
Maybe I can stop holding back now. Boast all you want. You weren't that talented at my age. I won! His confidence was not misplaced. None of his seniors or superiors could defeat him. But even though Jinmu outstripped all his peers, he still hadn't managed to surpass his master. Jinwu, at last you've arrived. Are you ready to complete your training? I've been ready for a long time. I won't disappoint you, Grandmother. I expected nothing less from you. On guard! I won. I did it. What spirit you have. Sometimes you remind me of your father. But you wouldn't have been able to touch me if I had called upon the Tengu god. I'm sure I can. Let's have a rematch, and don't hold back this time. That arrogance it reminds me of. No, it doesn't matter. Only the power of a god can surpass the power of another god. Still, you fought well. Does that mean I can join the battle? Very well. You will join the fight against the Natsu clan, but you will stay in the back ranks and listen to your superior's orders. Don't be a hero. I know your heart is good, but have no mercy for these traitors. Advance with us to victory and avenge our people. I will protect you with the storm of our god Tengu. Your training is complete, and I can now give you your weapon. The katana is a samurai's best ally. 
take care of it and carry it with you wherever you go. Weeks passed, and unfortunately war broke out once again. It was time to head out to battle. The Aki clan advanced through the valley to respond to the Natsu attack, and Jinmu hastened to join Akiku and his fellow samurai. But he lost track of his friend, and naively plunged into enemy lines to find her. Jinmu soon faced a formidable opponent. It was time to put all his learning into practice. For justice. The traitors of Aki will pay! traitors. What? Fire? Despite Tengu's protection, a fire seemed to have broken out. Who could unleash such flames under a divine storm? Well, well, well. A raven who's still standing. You should have fled while you had the chance. But since you're here, be my warm-up. And then I'll cross swords with the furious harpy who serves as your leader. Amaterasu, the leader of the Natsu clan himself. I must not hesitate. I must eliminate him. It's the only thing standing between us and peace. Jinmu had to face the Samurai of the Sun, blessed by the goddess Kitsune, a formidable and experienced opponent, against whom he probably stood no chance. You're a little more skilled than the others, but yeah. you're starting to... No one had landed a blow on me in ages. It's just luck. <laughs> You're a little more skilled than the others, but you're starting to tire. Don't be disappointed. It's normal to bow down to me. But try to entertain me a little longer, will you? No one had landed a blow on me in ages. It's just luck. Yeah. The weaklings I've faced over the years have made me let my guard down. It won't yeah. happen again. I can keep standing up to you. If you give up. We can still spare lives. 
Give up? What's your name, young raven? Jinmu. Jinmu. The fire of war will only be extinguished when Susano frees my daughter. She knows it all too well. A Natsu woman? In the Aki clan? What are you talking about? You're fighting her war without even knowing this? How naive. You must think your intentions are noble, but your savage beast of a leader has more blood on her hands than you realize. She doesn't care about you. She knows that I will eliminate every last one of her followers if she doesn't return my child, and yet she does nothing. You're spouting nonsense. Stop trying to deceive me. Why would she do that? Because she only listens to her rage. You'll see for yourself. Wait! Still trembling, Jinmu looked around him. The battle was over. Despite significant losses, Aki had come out on top. Yet despite this victory, thoughts collided in Jinmu's head. What was he talking about? His daughter? Could it be that Grandmother has been hiding things from me? All these corpses. As many Aki as Natsu. Is Amaterasu really the only one responsible? His daughter. Could she be the real reason driving him to attack us? Is he fighting out of... Love? No, I might- <laughs> Jinmu, you're back! Not even a scratch! I expected nothing less from you! We managed to push back the Natsu. Come, join us. We all deserve to catch our breath. The Natsu will eventually come back, and this endless cycle of violence will resume as if today had never happened. Why not seek to stop this conflict and enjoy lasting peace? Jinmu, you know very well that it's not possible. Amaterasu doesn't listen to anyone but himself. He only wishes to destroy. I exhausted my kindness and patience a long time ago. The only option left is to defeat them all until the last one. I think I have a solution. I met Amaterasu and... Ah, here lies the cause of your sudden impudence. He tried to manipulate you, did he not? You must not listen to him. Amaterasu is a liar. His words are as deceitful as the goddess he worships. That's not it. There is a way out, and Amaterasu has only one demand to stop this war. Enough. You must do as I say. I don't have to answer to you. We are at war, and here I am your leader. We must exterminate the enemy. Grandmother, is it true that we're holding his daughter captive? Ah! Of course he still won't listen to reason. You cannot understand. It's too soon. I'll overlook your impertinence this time, and we'll talk about it at the village. We have to set her free now. We have to stop. It's impossible! You're... Ah, oh, I should have known. It was a mistake to bring you to the battlefield. Impossible? I think the mistake comes from your blind stubbornness. If you refuse to explain, I will have to take matters into my own hands. Jinmu, please stop! Listen to your leader! You know the punishment for mutiny. Death. Don't make me fight you. You leave me no choice. You are the one who taught me to fight for my people. You don't understand. Give up and I can forgive this offense. This deceitful fox has confused your mind. Come back to your senses. This... I can't move anymore. Does that mean it's over? I can't oppose the gods, even if it's for peace. Jinmu, you have disobeyed your leader and your god. Go. Go? I condemn you to exile. Take your weapon. March to the mountains of the north. And never come back. And so Suzanu banished Jinmu from the village and exiled him to the mountains.
Jinmu felt completely lost. The history of his clan, the atrocities committed by Amaterasu, Susanu's just cause. Where was the truth in all of this? And where were the lies? Who was his daughter? What was the real reason for this conflict? He remembered very well the story his grandmother had told him. In ancient times, Amaterasu had received the blessing of the mischievous goddess Katsune in exchange for his blind devotion and unwavering submission. He then began to massacre all those who did not join her cult. That was the origin of this endless conflict. At least that's what Jinmu had been convinced of until yesterday. Now he wasn't sure of anything anymore. Did death, lifeless bodies, pain and cruelty really have a meaning? Deep in Jinmu's soul, a conviction was beginning to emerge. This war was futile and it could be stopped. And while he was lost in his thoughts, Jinmu continued to advance toward the mountains. The grass became snow as the fresh air of the valley gradually gave way to the icy cold of the peaks. Without realizing it, Jinmu had arrived to the mountains. Legend had it that it was beyond these summits that the abode of the gods was located, and that before inhabiting the valleys, the first samurai had trodden this same snow. But today, it would have been surprising for anyone to inhabit such an inhospitable climate. Could this be a snowstorm? Grandmother told me about it. Could she have already seen these mountains? Ugh. The wind is blowing so hard, and I can't see a thing with this blizzard. I can't go any further. Where am I? I must have passed out. Young Raven, the wind that blows in this place is too fierce for your wings. Retrace your steps. Who are you? A god? A ghost? Please, help me.
Here? How can anyone survive in these forbidden mountains? No matter. It's my last hope. No one would have the strength to survive the storm of Orochi without my protection. Young samurai, who are you, and what are you doing here? My name is Jinmu. I wander aimlessly. I was banished from my village. A ronin? Because I disobeyed my chief's orders. Grandmother Susano preferred to send me away rather than tell me the truth. Susano. So you are the grandson of Susano. In any case, you must leave. A boy of your kind would not last long in these mountains. You don't look very young. I doubt you're more resilient than I. Insolent! I am Isonagi, the first samurai. And this is the temple dedicated to the god Orochi. I still have some resources left in me, and I will show you. Let that be a lesson to you. With the exchange of blows, Jinmu's pendant came out of his clothes, which did not escape the old master's notice. Your necklace! What are you doing with the enchanted pearl of Amaterasu around your neck? What? But it's my mother's necklace. What else has Susano been hiding from me? That's a beautiful irony of fate. Who would have thought such a miracle could happen one day? This changes a lot of things. Your story is, in a way, my story as well. Sit down, Jinmu. I have many things to tell you. Long before you were born, I was the first human to meet the gods who came from their garden across the Bridge of Destiny. They taught me the art of the blade to protect mankind, and in turn, I passed on this knowledge to my peers so that they could continue this sacred mission. We took the name of Samurai. Under our watch, peace reigned and the world was in harmony. You know them as mortal enemies, but at the time, Amaterasu and Susano were my two best disciples. There was a healthy rivalry between them, and they were close as only a brother and a sister can be. Time passed, and each started their own family. Susano adopted an abandoned child and raised him as her son. That was your father, Oku. As for Amaterasu, I agreed to give him the hand of my heiress, with whom he then had a single daughter, Kushina. Life could have kept flowing quietly like this, but one day, my daughter fell gravely ill. Amaterasu prayed to the gods to save his wife, but in vain. He then turned to me, begging me to let him enter the garden of the gods to heal her with the divine water. But my loyalty to the gods came first even before my daughter, and I refused his request. Amaterasu never forgave me, and thus his pain turned into hatred. This was when Kitsune, the fox goddess, chose to pour her venom into the ear of this suffering man. She promised him the survival of his beloved and the power to protect her. In return, Amaterasu had to commit to devoting himself exclusively to Kitsune, 
and renouncing the other gods. Blinded by his pain and by the rage of feeling abandoned, my former disciple agreed to this pact. True to his word, he established the exclusive cult of Kitsune and, ready to do anything to save his wife, he ruthlessly killed those who refused to follow his madness and he even ended up seriously injuring me. Suzano might have been able to reason with Amaterasu, but without warning anyone, she had already gone to fetch the sacred water for him. When she returned, she found the village in flames and bloodshed. Devastated by this bout of madness from the man she had always considered her brother, she swore not to let these crimes go unpunished. And in her quest for justice, she returned to the garden to implore the help of the gods. It was Tingu, the raven god, who answered her call. Under his wing, and with the help of the survivors, she built the Aki clan. And that is when this merciless war began against those whom Amaterasu had rallied under his banner, the Natsu clan. As for me, I am now the guardian of the bridge that leads to the Garden of the Gods, so that the influence of the Divine never causes such ordeals again. Kushina. That's my mother's name. So that means... Amaterasu's daughter is my mother? Jinmu. You are a descendant of the Aki and Natsu clans. But then, Amaterasu is my grandfather? And you're my... Uh, distant ancestor? Great-grandfather. It is this family connection that has brought you here safely. Your magic necklace is a token of affection given by Amaterasu to his daughter through which he passed on his protection to you in turn, a love that protected you from Orochi's blizzard. So Amaterasu doesn't know that my mother is dead and thinks she's kidnapped? Yes. Susano kept everything from him to protect your parents and you the product of their forbidden love. Even after all this time, she continues to hide the truth from him. Maybe Tengu deliberately obfuscated her mind to perpetuate her feud with his rival. Hatred. Wars. It's all the gods' fault. Now that I know everything, I must be able to dissipate their confusion. I have the blood of both sides in me. I might be able to appease them. Arrogant. You cannot stop the course of history alone, and certainly not against the will of the gods. But you... You were their master. What if... Do not count on my help. I can no longer leave these mountains. If you plan to go back, I will not stop you. Ah. So I have to challenge the gods in order to stop this absurd war. But a human triumphing over the gods is unthinkable. Despite knowing the truth, I still feel like I'm at a dead end. It is my duty to watch over my descendants. You can stay with me if you want. I will not intervene between my two disciples, but I can at least offer you a place here. Thank you, Izanagi. Jinmu, disturbed by these revelations, stayed a while with the Fuyu clan, using his time to train and think.
beaten me again. You're probably the strongest samurai I ever faced, aside from Izanagi. It's still not enough. I don't stand any chance against Susano and the god protecting her. Only a fool would provoke Susano. She asked for the power of a god and received it, without even needing to make a pact. Without a pact? How could she possibly seek the help of a god without consequences? Those were different times. We once had a better relationship with the deities. There was a balance. If a god liked you, they would sometimes offer their help without asking for anything in return. And we didn't need to guard this bridge like we do today. So it is possible for gods to offer help without a pact? Yes, but that was before Kitsune and then Tengu broke this peace. Everything changed, unfortunately, and we can never hope to stop those two again. The other gods were furious when the situation got out of hand. Fortunately, the snow of Orochi calmed their wrath. Maybe I have an idea. A way to defeat them. It's worth a try. The story Izanagi told Jinmu had convinced him that he should stop the war himself. The two rivals, blinded by their hatred, would listen to none but their idols. But Jinmu would force them to return to reason. And if he had to fight them for it, then so it would be. Fortunately, he felt like the words of the samurai had opened a way for him. With a fresh impetus, Jinmu quickened his pace. If he could convince a higher being to help him, that power might be enough to end this madness. He just needed a push to rise to their level. The blessing of a god who would work for peace. Divine help, once again, for the very last time. <laughs> I should have known. You want an audience with the divine to receive their power. I cannot let you cross this bridge. The gods must not interfere in mortal affairs any further. Haven't you learned any lessons from the mistakes of your elders and their terrible pacts? Just one last time. To put out the fire of war they have ignited. To repair all the misfortunes they have caused. Only a god can help me fight on equal grounds against Tengu and Kitsune. Bringing a supreme being into the situation will only make things worse. It is a noble goal, but you do not realize what you are doing. I am the guardian of the Garden of the Gods, and this heavy responsibility falls upon me. I failed to stop your grandparents, and because of that failure, they are still struggling in an endless war. But I will not let you pass. Orochi, these snowstorms were your doing. What a point. You received a divine gift yourself. You do not understand. The anger of the gods was going to destroy our world. I had no choice but to accept Orochi's help, and you know nothing.
I promise to settle everything. I recognize here the arrogance of your grandfather. But very well, I can admit defeat. Cross the bridge before I change my mind. Jinmu had triumphed over the first samurai and prepared to enter the realm of the gods. His confidence and determination renew. Here I am, finally in this legendary garden. Magnificent. No painting could do it justice. But it is strangely empty. No, I feel like I'm being watched. dares enter our lands? It's been a while since a mortal disturbed us. My name is Jinmu. I'm the disciple and grandchild of Susano. Nice to meet you, your... Uh, godliness? Don't try to flatter me, you foolish youngster. Tell me why I shouldn't just devour you right now. I came to offer a deal. 
Am I to understand that you want to make a pact with a god? No way! I don't want to do that. I just need your help to bring peace among the mortals. <laughs> you have nothing to offer. Why should I accept? Our wars are the result of your carelessness and the prideful desires of some other gods who used humans. It's your responsibility to fix this. How dare you give me orders and question our ruling? What arrogance! Why should the war between Kitsune and Tengu be my problem? Your greatness is only expressed in the devotion of those who submit to you. If the wars between them continue, humans will forget about the other gods. Grant me your power, and I'll restore lasting peace, and all the gods will be honored equally. That's a very ambitious bet. You think you can stop all these wars alone? If someone can do it, it's me, by virtue of my blood. With your help, I will succeed, and the providential god who will have helped me will be covered with praise by grateful humans. Interesting points. All right then, let's restore the peace between the clans. That's it? You're convinced? You don't want to kill me anymore? <laughs> I haven't eaten humans in ages. It's bad for digestion. And I like your energy, little creature. I just wanted to scare you, to test you, and you dared to challenge me. So it was true. All I had to do was ask nicely. You weren't even polite. Anyway, if you want to leave with my power, you'll have to prove yourself worthy. Show me you can handle it, and entertain me. If you're not up to the task, I'll send you down the waterfall. Nobody can beat me with this power. There's no way I'll lose. Well, at least you have to be able to. Receive my strength. Channel the incessant flow of Ryujin, the Dragon God, through your sword. My power brings life and soothes wounds. Use it well, and prepare to exceed yourself. Since I've had so much fun, you have proven yourself, little being. Now go, and stop these wars, as you wish to. Climb on my back. In my great kindness, I will drop you at the heart of the valley. My young recruit cannot make the journey on foot, and it will do me good to stretch my scales. Now, under the protection of Ryujin's torrents, Jinmu felt capable of ending the fighting without bloodshed. But the two stubborn rivals would probably refuse to hear any of it. The fighting has started again. Susan, you don't want peace, you just want to continue the senseless killing. Yeah.
Well, here you are, Jinmu. I was looking forward to our next meeting. I knew you would come back. You fought with the sun, and you want to measure yourself against it again. But this time, little crow, all that awaits you is to burn your wings there. I'll kill you! Oh-ho! Aggressive right off the bat. So, Jinmu... You are no longer seeking peace? Did I give you my power to perpetuate the cycle of hatred? Ryujin... Oh, it's so hard. I think I'm starting to understand them. I feel so much rage. But I must not let myself be consumed by hatred. Amaterasu. I was banished by Susano and I... am no longer here to fight. That demon. She didn't want to hear a word from her own disciple. That doesn't surprise me coming from her. You deserve a wiser leader. Like me. That is why you're here. You seek refuge with your former enemy, now that you know who is trustworthy. Of course not. I'm here to talk to you about your daughter. My daughter? Have you seen her? How is she? Listen, Amaterasu. Your cursed fight has been in vain for a long time. My mother, she... She died giving birth to me. What are you talking about? So that's it? She sent you to confuse me? What cowardice! That's stooping pretty low, even for you, Susano. But no, I... You have a new strength. They don't understand. They loved each other. Don't listen to him, Amaterasu. Their words are lies. Kill him! Yeah. You stole her from me. 
You condemned her to live far away from her own people, and then you killed her! Susano took everything from me. There's nothing left to save. No. You were simply blinded by your anger. Open your eyes. Look. It's... my pearl. This is proof of their love. It should be enough for you to understand that your daughter joined my father willingly and happily. Perhaps she simply couldn't bear to live without him. I... Forgive me, Kushina. It's all my fault. Your mother is gone. You were my only reason to go on. What have I done? What good is power if I have no one left to protect? I killed your father. He came in peace to tell me she was pregnant thinking he could convince me to stop fighting for a better future. Kitsune convinced me he was lying. I thought I was protecting her. It's my fault. Everything is falling apart. Kill me. Take revenge! I am tempted, but that is what you would have done. And it would free you from the weight of your mistakes. Your actions have shattered lives. Your punishment will be to live with your mistakes and work for a better future. Get rid of your fox to start paying your debt. I'll take care of reasoning with Susano. Susano will listen to you even less than I did. She hates me and will do everything to continue the fight. You don't know the whole story. Despite all my efforts, my wife could not escape her fate. I was left with only my daughter to I then asked Susano for a truce. Against all odds, she agreed, on the condition that her son would marry my daughter. At first, I gave in. But then, if they had your agreement, why did she leave without telling you? Kushina never dared to tell me how she felt about your father. Because of Kitsune's words, I thought this was another attempt by Susano to seek revenge by kidnapping my daughter. So in the end, I refused their marriage. But she disappeared a few days later. I thought she had been kidnapped. Enraged, I resumed hostilities. You know the rest. Another betrayal. So close to peace. Susano has every reason to hate. But now I have the power of Ryujin. I can calm her down. I am her own grandson. I don't want to fight her. But I will, if I must. Good luck, Jinwu. May the gods be with you. Thus Amaterasu's rage was extinguished. Thanks to the truth. Could Jinmu bring a clearing in Susanu's storm? Jinmu. Susano. It's pointless to come and beg. You don't understand our fight. You don't understand me. I want you far from all of this. Izanagi explained everything to me. My parents, my connection to Amaterasu. That irrelevant old man who never speaks, entangled in his inaction. I should never have shared my problems with him. We can stop all of this. Your enemy is ready to pay his debt and has stopped the fight. Please! It's impossible. Your mother is no more, same as your father. There's no turning back. Amaterasu never did any of the things he says. There's only war, and you must leave. Why do you only understand violence? Stop! Amaterasu knows about my mother's death. 
He has accepted it. Lies! That filthy fox and her disciple are nothing but the sea. Don't let yourself be fooled, Susanna. Jinmu, don't believe his lies. Kushina knew that Amaterasu would never accept her union with Aki. And she kept the truth from him. If his own daughter didn't trust him, why would I? Amaterasu knows about my mother's death. He has accepted it. Lies! That filthy fox is a disciple and nothing but deceiver. Don't let yourself be fooled, Susanna. He only wanted her happiness. He admitted his mistakes and will respect her will through mine. His daughter's happiness? Respecting her will? How dare he pretend such a thing? And when he killed your father, do you think he respected his will? Did that make her happy? Why isn't my body responding anymore? You lost. It's time to stop. If you can't end this war for my parents, do it for me. So that the legacy of your son, of our clan, can live on. You have truly surpassed me. Sometimes when you speak, you remind me so much of your father. What was he like? Impulsive. But he had a big heart, like you. When he found out his wife was pregnant, he aspired for a better future for you. That's why he wanted to talk to Amaterasu. I knew very well that he wouldn't listen. I forbade him from going, but stubborn as he was, he went anyway. He might still be alive if I had gone with him. Maybe we could have changed things. Susano, I'm sorry for what happened. I... We need to stop these fights that you perpetrate in the name of your gods. It doesn't make sense anymore. The past can't be changed. You may be right. I'm no better than him. I let Tengu guide my steps to satisfy my vengeance. And I caused bloodshed that I could no longer control. Will you listen to me? Is it really over? I will always hate him for what he did. Nothing he can do will ever pay his debt. But you're right. My son won't come back. You, however, are here. So let's do things your way for once. Thank you. I will show you that I am worthy of your trust. 
with the power of Ryujin, I will protect this peace. I will dedicate my life to it. I swear it. Thank you, Jinmu. I hope you won't repeat our mistakes. Tengu and Kitsune have returned home. Those rascals went back with their tails between their legs. And I will join them in our return home. Thank you, Ryujin. I couldn't have done this without you. Oh, you know, it suits me just fine. I had a lot of fun, and it was time to calm those two troublemakers down. But tell me, what will you do now? I think it's now my duty to work towards maintaining peace, like the first of the samurai, with the help of your power. The power of a god can do many things. I can extend your life and heal your wounds, but you won't become immortal. When you die, what will happen to this peace? That's no problem. I am still young, I have time. And I will create the Haru clan and trust future generations to be the guardians of peace. I'll tell them of our adventures. I'll talk about your help, and I'll train them to carry on our will even after my death. You won't mind having a few more followers, will you? <laughs> You're really funny, little human. I like flattery. Well then, you can keep my power. You seem to know where you're going. Good luck, Jinmu. And I hope we never meet again. Jinmu put an end to the war, pacified the defeated samurai, and drove away the manipulative gods. The gods left the mortal world, and it was decided to destroy the bridge that led to their garden, so it would remain so. Jinmu founded the Haru clan to maintain this peace, and the balance among the samurai was restored. However, with the clan still holding on to some of their past grudges, it was decided that the year would be divided into four periods. Each would see the succession of the protection of the four legendary warriors who would take turns watching over the world and its people. Over the years, the samurai clans and their stories eventually faded behind many myths shaped by the passage of time. The names of the legendary fighters gave birth to divine tales. Of these four legendary clans, Haru, Natsu, Aki, and Fuyu, only their protection remains today. A trace of divine power so strong that it affects this world and ours. It is this eternal cycle that we call the Four Seasons. The living testimony of the samurai legacy, those who showed the world that peace and prosperity are possible when war is replaced by reconciliation and forgiveness.
Thank you for having played the game, Samurai.